So Death Watch can be in Tactical Doctrine Turn 1 in their new codex, and they've got some shiny new psychic powers in the Xenopurge discipline. Let's talk about the preview for Codex Death Watch. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video we're going over the Warhammer Community Preview for Codex Death Watch, which will be available for pre-order this weekend. Here's a quick summary of what they've told us, including a few bits from the Index Death Watch. First of all, and perhaps the most interesting news, is that they have their unique Doctrine mechanic. You can basically choose the order of them now, although I believe that this would likely be instead of having some sort of Super Doctrine for Death Watch, much like some of the other Space Marine chapters get, such as Blood Angels with their unique Assault Doctrine for example. It's not 100% confirmed, but I think that that will be instead of that. They talked a little bit about Kill Teams and the various ways that you can build them, which I strongly suspect is just going to be very similar to the rules that they showed off in the Index. There are now four types of Kill Team. Proteus is for the standard size marines that aren't Primaris, your standard Death Watch veteran Kill Team from the previous Codex. The Primaris variants have all been mixed up a bit though. Fortis takes five Intercessors as a base, and then you can add Assault Intercessors, Outriders and Hellblasters to that. Indomitor is a Gravis one, you start with five Heavy Intercessors, then add Aggressors, Eradicators and Inceptors to make up to ten. And Spectrus is the long-awaited Phobos type Kill Team with 5 Intercessors as a base, and then you can add Incursors, Reavers and Eliminators up to a max of 10. Could be some interesting combos around there, particularly being able to field Eliminators in such great numbers hidden behind Infiltrators, or fielding a bunch of Eradicators with Heavy Intercessors tanking for them. I would mention that from the Index it looks like only Bolters and Combi Bolters are getting special issue ammunition, so none of the Intercessor Bolt Rifles anymore, which is a real shame to be honest. And when you do have these mixed kill teams like this, they no longer grant the entire squad certain special rules for members included. Previously, a Terminator would make the kill team fearless, and bikes would allow you to fall back and charge, but it seems that they've done away with that mechanic. Besides that, in the preview, they talked about a new Xenopurge discipline, so hopefully six new psychic powers for the Death Watch, and two new stratagems and a relic are previewed. So let's go through things in a bit more detail, starting with those new doctrines. So the Mission Tactics rule essentially allows Death Watch armies to mix up the order that they have their doctrines in. You don't use the rules found in Codex Space Marines for determining which Doctrine you're in, just at the start of each round you can pick either Devastator, Tactical or Assault. However, the limits on how many times you can use them are still the same, so you can still only ever use Devastator once, you can still only use Tactical up to twice, and you can still use Assault up to three times. Just because this rule would really interfere with other chapters' Doctrines if you mix and match, I suspect that this will only be applicable if you are playing an entire Death Watch army. I could be wrong, but you could be in some very weird situations otherwise as half of the army wouldn't have this rule. I think some potential interesting uses could be having Tactical Doctrine Turn 1 and Turn 2, maybe if you had some Death Watch veterans in a drop pod with special issue ammunition dropping down, having an extra pip of AP on some very nice anti-infantry fire could be very nice, or even just if you're having a whole load of intercessors run up the board, maybe if you've got a ton of auto bolt rifles on the go, then having AP-1 both Turn 1 and 2 could be pretty nice. I think it could be quite fun to try and make the Assault Doctrine work, maybe put Dactical or Devastator active for Turn 1, and then go for 3 Assault Doctrines in a row when you're actually in a position to make some charges. I'm not sure this would really work in any sort of competitive sense, there aren't all that many Assault Synergies for Death Watch within the Codex, but it could be kind of interesting to get some extra AP Chainswords on the go very very early, maybe you could make use of some Vanguard Veterans with that heavy Thunder Hammer that they get. In all honesty, in some games it might just be very sensible to start in Devastator, then move on to Tactical when you're in range for the shorter ranged weapons, but it's nice to have that flexibility, you could really try and build around this, and I think it's quite nice to have the option later game, if you have a turn where you particularly think that Assault Doctrine might be better, and you could choose between Assault or Tactical in the very late game. Overall, quite a cool little rule, I don't think it's particularly overpowered or anything, but a fun little nice to have. Next, they've given us one Psychic Power previewed from this Xena Purge discipline, I must say it's nice for them to be on par with the other chapters who all have their own unique psychic powers, although I must admit I found it quite funny that in the explanation bit they said it's just as effective on non-Xenos models, so while it's good at purging Xenos, it's presumably equally good at purging anyone else. To be honest it might be a bit of a better game balance decision, rather than having just very very easy games against Xenos, and very hard games against everyone else, but it would have been quite fluffy to have extra powers against certain Xenos races. The one that they've shown off I think is okay, it's called Neural Void, and it's basically an anti-assault infantry debuff that you take on a Psyker. It's got warp charge 7 and 18 inch range, you select one enemy unit, and it's minus 1 to attack, and can only charge the unit that's closest to it. Personally I don't think it's going to see very much use this one, 
as you have to choose psychic powers before the game now. It's just a bit underwhelming if you came up against a foe without a big Death Star Assault unit to use it on. And even then, it's not all that much of a debuff. Your opponent will still be able to do decent damage in the assault phase, and typically you're usually going to want to be charging the closest unit to you anyway. At best, I think it's only going to be a bit annoying for the opponent, and nowhere near worth the price of entry for a Librarian, compared with just doing damage like Smite, or maybe using Psychic Fortress for a nice 5 plus invul. Hopefully there'll be some better options than this. Finally, we've got a previewed Relic and two Stratagems. First is the Black Weave Shroud. I hear that Black is really in for Death Watch this season. You add one to your toughness, and if you lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound, you get to ignore it on the roll of a 4+. Again, fairly passable for me, I'm afraid. Typically, damage-dealing relics tend to be a bit better than at defensive relics, and compared with this, I'd rather have some of the standard Codex Space Marine options. The two stratagems are both tailored ones against certain Xenos races, and I'm quite glad to see that they've kept these. I thought it was quite fun to have their own unique tactics against certain Xenos races, and it certainly fits with the fluff. Prognosticating Volley is their anti-Eldar one. I believe it's likely to replace their intercepting volley that they had previously, which is a kind of a shame really, as that one allowed you to fire a full squad at an Eldar unit at minus one to hit, if that Eldar unit has fly, and it finished within 12 inches of your squad. That one could be ridiculously punishing to an Eldar player, and was really really powerful for one command point. I'd say that this one is weaker, not quite as devastating, but will likely see quite a lot of use throughout the game. It's basically just a nice, clean and simple one command point to ignore any hit roll or ballistic skill modifiers when you make a shooting attack at an Eldar unit. Plenty of Eldari units have minus one to hit baked into them, or they might be able to pick it up with something like Conceal. Whenever you're firing against such a unit with a ballistic skill 3 Death Watch unit, this is essentially going to be one command point to boost your firepower by 33%, which is really quite a good return, so I could most certainly see that being used. The other one is the Anti-Necron one, Overkill which basically represents them firing loads and loads of bolt shells into downed Necrons to make sure they don't get back up. You can use this one in the shooting or fight phase when you've attacked a Necron unit, and for the results of those attacks, the Necrons get minus one to their reanimation protocols once they try and get back up. Again, I think that this one could be decently usable, particularly whenever you're dealing quite a lot of damage with one unit against something like a blob of Necron warriors. Only reanimating on sixes might mean a few less warriors return to the fray, so I think it certainly has decent use. Not one I'd probably use every turn, I'd probably just save it for the optimal scenario when a big unit of Death Watch was really trying to down a big squad of warriors. So in general some interesting news for Codex Death Watch, I really quite like the mission tactics option, it seems fun and quite fluffy without being too OP. I'm interested to see what the other spells on the Xena Purge discipline are, although I must admit the one that they've previewed doesn't look too great to me. And I think it's going to be fun to see what sort of combos people create with those new mixed skill teams. I'm afraid I'm not 100% convinced just how strong Death Watch are looking at this point. We're really going to have to wait for the full rules to make that decision. Let me know your thoughts on the previews down in the comments below, and feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics if you'd like to see more coverage of the Death Watch, which we'll hopefully have as soon as their codex drops. If you've been enjoying the videos, I'd just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Channel Patreons get a few benefits on the channel, such as being able to see certain videos early, regular votes and polls to see what sort of things come next, and also entry into the channel's monthly prize draw with a chance to win some big kits. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.